It's time for roses and tecate. I forgot the rosé. It's beer this week. Ah. Beer, carbs, grains, weeds, corn, potatoes. What's in this? Either way, if I want to be in The Bachelor, I probably shouldn't be drinking it because it'll make me gain weight. I look great on you, aunt. But here we are, everybody. It's delicious. So, I forgot the rosé, which means I had a couple tequilas. And now I'm drinking this beer. It's a hometown kind of a feel. Well, this episode of The Bachelor was all about hometown dates. Let's dive in. Starting out with Raven in Hoxie, Arkansas, everybody. Guys, Raven says that in Hoxie, it is super fun growing up going frog gigging and grain hopping and puddle jumping. Frog gigging, you go climb grain bins. Nick has no idea what he's in for today. And pig singing and all the things. A complete and utter surprise. What is gigging? I looked it up on Google Image and it's a lot of dead frogs. An utter surprise. Okay. Raven also reveals that the only place to really open up to somebody is in a grain bin. This is a sacred place. And then she says the grain bin is full of secrets. <laughs> So we meet Raven's brother because Raven and Nick go to tell each other the secrets at the top of the grain bin with their frog gigging and I thought he was a real police officer for a second because Raven was a really good actress. The rest of their date consisted of what I would call a near drowning. I don't know, was Nick trying to drown Raven in that bacteria filled water? Yeast! And I'm talking about the beer. I can't even take a bath, it's just so tepid and what's the word for a medium temperature? Is it tepid? I'm just struggling with the words today, everybody. <laughs> so at the end of the day, great moment, great family. Raven's dad is very cute. <laughs> Moving on to Rachel. Well, we all know what this date's gonna be about. I'm not colorblind. They went to Rachel's church and even the pastor didn't know what to say. He was like, Nick, have you ever been in? Have you been to a, have you been in this space? In this? In this space? Not this space. Not this one. Okay. Then we went to dinner with Rachel's family, who seems very lovely. Sisters, mom, just the whole crew. They seem great. And okra became the symbol of change. Okra. They said, Nick, you won't know what okra is. Nick said, I do know what okra is. I have no idea what okra is. I just know, know that it is okra. Thank you. Oh, you sort of. And we can all meet in the middle. Rachel doesn't even like okra. <laughs> uh, there was a super cute moment in here when Nick was like, Rachel. I would believe you, but you don't like anything. <laughs> oh my God, he really knows her and loves her. <laughs> Drink to that. Drink to knowing the person you're dating, who you're meeting the family of. Mm. I'm also starting to realize that each date had like a special food. Like Rachel's was okra. Okra. And Raven's was like that ricey water. Whatever that water was they were in. Hi. Next up, Corinne, who takes us to Miami, Florida, and one of the world's most exclusive malls. Shopping and me go hand in hand. I mean, we're like white on rice. How do you have an exclusive mall? The premise of a mall is that anyone can go to it. But that's what I like about Corinne. She makes everything special. I like white on rice. So Corinne took Nick shopping, and I just love this because yes, this is what Corinne wants to do. Love it. Yeah, love Corinne. Like her more and more as the season goes on. Thought she was funny in the beginning, and now I feel like she's getting more real towards the end. What a great developing story. My heart is gold, but my vagine is platinum. And I loved when Nick was trying on the clothes. Drink this beery stuff to that because this was the Nick that I know and love. He was so funny with his $800 sweatpants and his weird hat and his Miami... Miami soccer dad, <laughs> you know? Very humorous. Oh, a big moment. Corinne dropped the L-bomb. Okay, drink to that. It's getting real, Journey. This must be the infamous for Cal. And you guys, a moment we've all been waiting for. We met Corinne's nanny, Raquel. My nanny, Raquel. And Nick used the word infamous. We're all struggling with defining terms today. I wouldn't call Raquel infamous. I would call her famous. 
I think infamous implies villainous. She seems bad. Oh. Can I say I loved Corinne's family drink to her dad and his olives and his whiskey. He was fabulous. Oh. They seemed very sweet and very fun. And when Corinne said, Dad, I told Nick I loved him, and we've been dating for a month and a half, he was kind of like, honey. That's only six weeks. That's not that long. We also brought up what Nick used to do for a living. And I forgot that he sold software, which is also what Ben Higgins did. What is selling software? Is he selling AOL? Okay. So Corinne's adorable dad says that Corinne is the, the lead to Nick's pop. Whatever that means. And then he told Corinne she might have to be prepared to be the breadwinner of the family. He called it the worst case scenario. Shopping and me go hand in hand. I don't know how to feel about that. As a woman, I guess I was a little bit offended, but maybe he just knows his daughter. But Corinne said she was okay with it. And there was a moment when Corinne said that she finally felt like with Nick, she found a guy who she was worthy of. I've realized I need to give myself a little more credit. Corinne, you are worthy. Drinks to Corinne. But at the end of the day, Corinne's family is super awesome. I want them to have their own reality show. And the food of her date was the olive. I think this means Corinne's Greek. Her last name is Olympios. <laughs> last but not least, Vanessa. We go to Montreal. I forgot Vanessa was from Canada, but she is. And from here on out in the date, I was very confused on her whole nationality thing. Is she Italian? Is she French? Is she Canadian? How many languages and which ones does she speak? I don't know, but she's exotic. Okay. So, oh, what a moment with her students when they were so happy to see her. I teared up. That was very sweet. And I think that the work Vanessa does is awesome. Cheers to you. And then we went home and there was some very not so subtle, like French cafe music playing in the background. <laughs> that was a really hard breakup for me. And I don't know. Was it free? Was it on? Was it free music? Availability thing. Manjamo. And we meet Vanessa's family, aka all of Montreal has come to meet Nick. So many people. Did all these people get their SAG after cards being on this show? Oh my god. It's a union. So Vanessa is talking with each one of her many family members. And then we came upon this 80s poet laureate Frenchman child. And I was transfixed. Who is this? Who was this? I missed his intro. It's her brother. He's interested. And her family is very concerned and they're talking about the logistics. Vanessa lives in Canada. Nick lives in Chicago, LA somewhere. And you know what? Caitlin Bristow and Sean Booth made it work. We exclusively interviewed Caitlin Bristow recently. That's available at etonline.com. One shameless plug per video. So Vanessa's family is divorced. First we met her mom's side, now we're meeting her dad's side. And her dad is mad. It's yes or no. Yeah, um. I don't really know what about but he's not happy, and then it becomes kind of evident that he might not have seen the show, ever. He is very upset that Nick has asked other women's parents for permission to propose. I feel like that happens every season, does it not? And then Vanessa gets upset about it. Has she seen the show? Has everyone seen the show? No? French Italian people! Whatever, they, both countries have wine. And so do I normally. Okay, and then we wrap things up. And Raven is like very upset that she's the only one who hasn't said I love you. But I'm pretty sure she was the first one to say I love you. A little too soon, but I said it. Whatever. I own it. Maybe she doesn't remember. We do. And Corinne drops this bomb of a quote. We laughed. We kissed. We giggled. I bought him a really nice outfit. God, I love Corinne. She's just slaying. I want to see her on Paradise. We interviewed Chad Johnson, and he said that he would love to see Corinne on Paradise, too. Check it out at etonline.com. Two shameless plugs for video. Drink every time you have one. And then we ended these hometown dates with an out-of-town girl. The return of Andy Dorfman! Hello, Nick. It was about three seconds long. We'll see more of it next week. 
so those were the hometown dates, everybody. We had a near drowning, an okra moment. I have no idea what okra is. An exclusive mall. We're shopping at one of the most exclusive malls. And Italian tears. Very, very good. I thought all of the dates had super fun and interesting moments. I thought all the families were super sweet. And I felt like we saw Nick's true connection with each woman. So let's drink to that. I think I just gained five pounds. <laughs> okay. I promise I won't forget the rosé next week. If you promise to subscribe to ET on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow me on social media if you want, and check out all of our interviews at etonline.com. Thank you guys so much for being here. Seriously, we are winding down. Not many episodes left, and so much more fun to be had. Have a great night, everybody. Bye! I don't know why. This is a foreign substance in my body.